Hello, my name is Jimmy Elizondo from Real World Ranching, where our goal is to maximize your profitability while to improve your land the fastest. Today, we have Chase from Southeast Texas, where he gets a lot of rainfall and it's flat land. His forages are mostly warm season forages. And he would like to know how to handle the breaks during the transition and how big a break when it's a green grass, when it's a soft pile grass. And that's what I'm going to, to talk about today. Uh, Chase, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, sir. I'm down here northeast of Houston, uh, out by Cleveland, where we have, like Jim said, 54 inches of rainfall annually, uh, warm season grasses. We've got... Um, typically have a problem with wet hay, which he's already covered uh, or stockpiled. Uh, but anyway, I was wondering uh, how to manage the breaks and what size between transition periods to, to allow enough forage in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. Right now, because we are um, in the winter and forage will not grow much, I will suggest you start um, broadcasting seed of ball clover. Ball clover can do well under those conditions, but the one that can handle wet soils the best in the spring is white clover. So you can also uh, broadcast white clover. The beauty of ball clover is that it resets itself and you do not have to plant it anymore. And it will go to seed even when it's very short, it's short grazed. So that's my favorite one. But if it doesn't do well in some areas, put some uh, white clover, maybe a pound of white clover per acre, along with three to four pounds of ball clover per acre. That's what I would suggest in your situation. Nothing else, because it gets too wet and muddy. Now, I already covered uh, how total grazing will help you to not overgraze because overgrazing is regrazing before the grass has fully recovered the grass or forages to individual plant. So when we do continuous grazing, uh, we have overrested and underrested plants in the same paddock. When we do selective rotational grazing, because we allow them to select the best parts of plants and the best species, we also have overrested and overgrazed or underrested plants in the same paddock, but to a lesser extent. And that's why we can increase stocking rate because we start giving a longer rest period. Under continuous grazing, the rest period may be 10 days because they return to the most tender regrowth. But under rotational selective grazing, we can give them a little more. But if we want to increase our stocking rate to make some money, we need to go to total grazing where our harvest efficiency is much higher, 80 to 90%, and we consume most all of the forage, giving the rest of the property a much longer rest. And then we have the opportunity to stockpile grass for winter use or summer drought use. Now you ask, and all that is covered in the total grazing online course, but you ask, how to handle the breakthrough into transition between stockpile and warm season, then back to stockpile. As I explained in the course, the size of the break needs to be such that the cattle can consume it all before they foul the forage with manure and urine they drag with their hooves. When it's muddy, you cannot do this very efficiently. So you need to give them larger areas because they will drag the mud and foul the pasture, your stockpile. But when it's not muddy, you can do it and you can harvest 80 to 90% of what is there, obtaining more cow days per acre per grazing. Remember that a cow day is the amount of forage required to feed a cow to satisfy for a full day. So if you feed hay plus a protein supplement, because the hay around here is low in protein and they need protein to be able to digest it, the rumen microorganisms, 
the cost will be around $1.50 to $1.75 per cow per day. When you feed them stockpile, the cost will go down to 50, 40, 40 cents per cow per day. So the difference is about around a dollar a day. So you can save from 100 to $200 per cow per day per year. But depending on your environment and the flatness of your land, your forage can start to rot, your warm season forages. That's why I suggest that you start planting those legumes that I said that may do very well in your environment. I had them do very well here in Waller, Texas. Ball clover and white clover, the varieties that do best under those conditions and they reseed themselves. So that's a, a good recommendation, I think. Now, when you're grazing on stockpile, most surely they will need protein and that is covered in the online course of total grazing. I hope you can take it. It will help you enormously, it will change your outlook of how you see the, the farm. The farm needs to be considered as a, a living organism. And we want all the parts of it to improve because we want to regenerate the land so we can increase production and future production. And we do this mainly by the type of grazing, which allows the plant to grow longer, taller, with a stronger and deeper root that can become fat when we stockpile. Fat roots are essential for growing humus and for the vigorous regrowth next spring. So I hope you like this. Oh, in the, in the, being in the summer or in the winter, stockpile or green season grazing, the size of the break needs to be such that they finish 80 to 90% of available forage in an hour and a half if you're going to give four breaks per day. If not, if you're going to give one break per day, which is the second best, then they need to finish 80 to 90% of it in 24 hours. This is easy to observe. You need to look at gut feel, you need to look at body condition, and you need to observe the manure to know if they require protein or not, which I already explained is so much cheaper than hay feeding and improves your land so much faster because those stockpile areas are alternated or rotated through your farm every year. I hope you like this chase and I hope to see everyone in my, our next laser coach session of Real World Ranch. Thank you. Thank you.